and you have kids or you have people that you're trying to bring in or you're trying to proselytize, then you need to make sure that they fully understand you are in a sense responsible. It is your obligation that they understand exactly what the hell they're getting into. Right? You know, what, what is it that I'm getting into? If they know full and well what it is that they're getting into, they'll be able to better prepare psychologically for the process. But if they don't know what they're getting into and they find themselves 40 years old, completely absorbed by guilt because of the transgressions they've done while they had faith and questioning whether or not they're going to be damned forever because of that, well, that's just not a good system of belief. I mean, that's just obviously not. Why? Because I can just easily get rid of that. I can just swap that off and be like, you know what, I don't know, I, I no longer ascribe to that system anymore. That system, I'm not affiliated with it, so all of your guilt and all of your sadness and all of your fear, that's y'all. I don't have that anymore. Right? So if you want to prevent that, if your goal, and now I'm obviously talking to religious folk, theistic believers, so listen. <laughs> if you want to prevent that, you need to make sure that in the process of recruitment, they are fully aware of the obligations. The more aware they are of the obligations, then the better a chance you have of, of maintaining. It's a, it's a problem of attrition, right? It's, it's really what it is. Let's just call it what it is. Right? So, I mean, it's supremely profound, you know, it's super important, right? Now, condition of exhaustion. Unlike the ancient religions, however, the contemporary practitioners are unaware, this is all me, uh, our contemporary practitioners are unaware of the condition of exhaustion, which is strategically designed process, as we saw, or system where the devotee reaches psychological and or physiological exhaustion, right? You're going to reach this point where you're, where you're tested. If you believe, right, you're going to reach, it doesn't have to be as extreme as denying Western medicine, it doesn't have to be that. But, I mean, I, I, I know of many people who say the reason why I recovered was because of miracle. I should have been dead. It was a miracle. And the doctors will even say, I don't know how to describe this, right? She'll say, well, she should have been dead, you know. I'm a surgeon or I'm a this, I'm a, you know, an oncologist and the person that had cancer, the, the person should be dead. But they're not. I can't explain it. So, you know, the appeal is made to the system of belief, and, and that's the point, right? That's the point. You have to recognize all of the complications that come in with ascribing to that belief. It's just not as simple as it may seem. Okay, last point. The live, um, divinely inspired psychosomatic and or psycho physiological illness. I'm not going to redraw the, the image. What I've done is I've taken two notes, note 189, which I've represented before, and I've coupled it with this new information. Now I see why I spent all this time on just one note. 2.30 was a heavy, heavy note, right? It was like, this, 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 I have to keep that in my mind because um, it wasn't until actually presenting it. Even in preparing for it, I recognized it was deep, but in presenting it, I'm like, no, it really was deep. It, it did warrant its own section. But um, 2.30 is huge, right? So I took um, note 189, which I had already diagrammed, and I just amended it a little bit with this last bit. Right, so what ends up happening, and I'm not going to go through it, you'll see, um, there's, there's um, an illogical fear of the after-death. I know you can't see it in the video, but you can see it if you have the notes. There's an illogical fear of the after-death, the after -death, and that is internalized. That illogical fear is internalized as a stressor. I'm fearful for my indiscretion, and because I have this indiscretion, now I have physical guilt, and, and, and I'm worrying about my eternal salvation, and blah, 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 and I'm constantly thinking about this you know, like a psychosomatic condition, and now I'm sick, for real, right? That's internalized, and that internalization results in a psych psychosomatic uh, um, or physical illness, uh, all of which was a product of what I've classified as divinely inspired, right? It was a de divinely inspired, you know, physiological, psychosomatic illness, right? And this is, it's exhausting giving a lecture like that. I see why it was only one note. I couldn't do two notes. <laughs> Um, 2.30 was a beast, uh, yeah, so, it's, um, it, it, it really, it's, it's trippy, right, it's, it's, there is, there is, and the more I've, you know, and I've read this before, but I never really, even in taking the notes, it's, it's different to one, because this is performance, right, it's, there's, um, I'm an educator, but there's a bit of stagecraft involved in this process, obviously I know that. Um, and insofar as I assume the role of Jason J. Campbell, <laughs> which I'm not in my real life. I mean, that is my name, but I'm not that person. 
you, you sort of you, you, you recognize what's going on and, and I think the the example of sort of the ayahuasca and the initiate is a really I didn't initially know that I was going to use that example but it came to me while I was doing this sort of performatively and it makes it that much more diabolical I think because if you know if you're the person who's already been initiated and you know that drinking this stuff, the ingestion of this stuff, transforms your mind, literally transforms your mind, and you give it to somebody without letting them know what's going to happen, that's wrong, period. I'll go on the record as saying it. That's wrong. That's not right. That's not cool. That's not kosher at all on any level. If you know the capability that it has to transform your mind and you give it to the initiate without letting them know, it's the wrong thing to do because then as the as the intoxication starts to take its effect in the body, my worldview changes, and I don't know why it's changed because I don't think that I have done anything to become intoxicated, and I don't just mean this. I hope you guys have been watching me long enough to know that I don't just mean this on the terms of intoxication as far as beer reference or drug reference. I mean intoxication in, as far as the way that Nietzsche has used it up until this point. Um, it's heavy, it's heavy, and it's exhausting. It's an exhausting thing to even con conceptualize. It, it's a dream. I can feel like my energy is just like shot, but I'll, I'll be good. I'll get some energy. I'm going to drive back to the house. So <laughs> I'll bump some heavy, heavy hip hop, and it'll be good. So uh, I'm going to loosen my tie for the first time before I finish electric. Um, <laughs> um, with that, uh, I want to thank you for watching my exhausted video. <laughs> uh, we're getting close to knocking out 100 notes in, uh, in 12 hours of video, and in, in a week. It's pretty gangster. So, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Have a good day.